deep in the forests of the Congo, in dark thickets and gloomy gorges. Live evil and vile creatures known as Oloko. These sinister cannibal dwarves are famous for their cruelty and thirst for human flesh. The Loco look like ordinary dwarves, but their sinister essence is felt even in the gloomy dark forests. They build their homes in tree hollows, using shifting tropical leaves and branches to create gloomy and wise designs. Their dwellings resemble a place from nightmares where branches and roots create eerie shadows and shapes that can frighten any creature. Eliko's clothes are made up of leaves and tropical foliage. Their skin is covered with spots and blisters, and their dark eyes sparkle with malice and a thirst for murder. But the most terrible attribute of Eloko is their bell, which performs ancient magic and is used to attract and bewitch unsuspecting people. When a loco hears the bell ring, it will be the last sound his victims will hear. Because a loco craves blood and flesh, they sneak up on their prey on the gloomy trails of the Congo and attack with unexpected and unbridled anger to satisfy their cruel need. And although much remains a mystery, one thing is for sure, the remains of disappeared people are regularly found in the woods. And there will always be someone who heard the bell ringing in the dark. All that remains is gloomy forebodings and the hope that this is just folklore and evil spirits. Or is it true and a loco, the vile cannibal dwarves, still live in the dark gorges and treacherous forests of the Congo, waiting for their next victim? The mystery of the evil and treacherous a loco continue to live among the inhabitants of the Congo territory and many representatives of the scientific community tried to investigate these mysterious creatures. Some researchers were going to go into the depths of the forests to find confirmation of the existence of a loco, while others claimed that all this was just a myth and legend. However, there were still horror stories among the locals about evil dwarves hiding in the depths of the jungle. Tales were passed from mouth to mouth about kidnappings that could not be explained for other reasons than possible attacks by the loco. Nevertheless, the most terrible thing happened as a result of the research of one of the brave geologists who went on an expedition to those gloomy forests of the Congo. He fearlessly penetrated into the depths of the hidden tropical corners, hoping to find evidence of the existence of a loco. The next message from the geologist should have been in the area of acceptable communication. But after a certain moment the connection with him was lost. Hours, days, weeks passed, but there was no news. The Congo became the scene for a large-scale search operation. Clubs of interests and various groups went to the forests of the Congo to find the missing geologist. And so, after many torments, a group of search engines made a terrible discovery. In the thicket of the forest, they came across an abandoned camp and found the corpse of a geologist there. His body was horribly mutilated and mutilated, as if he had been killed by some damn vile creatures. It was at this point that it became clear that the loco, the evil cannibal dwarves, were not just folklore and myth. They were a reality hiding in the dark corners of the wilderness. They were elusive and bloodthirsty. Their logic and motives were incomprehensible to man. The forests of the Congo have become the place where Eliko's appearances have become legendary and mystical. Who knows what else these dangerous creatures will find in their nests in the depths of the gorges. After the tragic discovery of the geologist's body, the story of the evil Loco has become even more mysterious and creepy. The Congo has become a place that many have begun to avoid for fear of being abducted by these vile creatures. Due to a terrible incident in the depths of the jungle, the authorities decided to ban any expeditions to these gloomy forests. In addition, many locals have fled the surrounding area, leaving their homes and fields. Fearing to become the next victims of a loco, 
Gossip and horror stories about mystical forest dwellers only reinforced this fear. However, there were a few brave researchers who did not believe in legends and myths. They continued to be interested in Iloko, seeking to uncover the mystery of these mysterious creatures. One of them was Dr. Alexandra McKenzie, a renowned anthropologist and savage researcher. Her experience and knowledge made her a real expert in studying local cultures and legends. Dr. Mackenzie decided to conduct her own research in the depths of the Congo. She became convinced that myths, legends and stories about Iloko are based on some kind of reality hidden from the eyes of ordinary people. She was interested to find out exactly what customs and beliefs are associated with these mysterious creatures and what makes them act. Equipped with powerful equipment and a professional team of scientists, Dr. Mackenzie traveled to the deepest and most inaccessible areas of the Congo forests. She intended to conduct the research scientifically, without prejudice and fear. Meanwhile, rumors of her ambitious expedition began to spread through the surrounding countries, and people were eagerly awaiting the results of her research. Thus, Dr. Alexandra Mackenzie and her team of researchers went into the depths of the forests of the Congo, able only to guess what awaits them. They overcame the thickets, bypassed deep crevices and penetrated into the heart of the gloomy forests. Everything that happened was filmed and photographed to give the world an idea of life. In these distant and mysterious places, they hoped that their research would help to understand this mysterious and terrible phenomenon and help people understand what is really hiding in the dark depths of the forest. However, Dr. Mackenzie and her team soon ran into serious difficulties. Their devices often went out of order, communication with the outside world was interrupted, and sometimes they experienced strange hallucinations that could not be explained. There was a feeling that the forest itself was opposing them, not wanting to reveal its secrets. And then, one gloomy evening, when the starry thread trembled over the dense crowns of the trees, something strange happened. The members of the expedition heard in human sounds resembling the soft ringing of a bell, similar to the one used by a loco to attract their victims. Everything went quiet and the tear froze. The team felt a growing anxiety and fear, as if they were breathing not air, but fear itself. Inarticulate moans and rustles that cling to the ears made the researchers tremble with fear and unknown sensations. They were sure that it was something sinister and mystical, something that would lead them to face death. And the further they went, the more they felt that there was no mistress here that they had followed exactly the footsteps of creatures about which there were dark legends. When the strange sound subsided, Dr. Mackenzie organized a consultation with colleagues and members of her team. Everyone was alarmed, but determined to continue the research. They decided to set up a night watch to be prepared for any possible dangers. It was time for a cool evening, but the humidity and warmth penetrated through the skin and clothes. Suddenly, a muffled whisper pierced the silence. Doctor. Mackenzie and her team raised their heads, and each of them listened intently. They were some kind of inhuman sounds, voices like rustling in the leaves and ominous whispers. Fear got the better of their resolve, and they decided to return to the camp and take precautions. But then, in the center of the field of keen vision, they saw something amazing. A human-like figure appeared among the thickets of bushes, but the creature was small, with unusually sharp features. It was only then that it dawned on them, it was a loco, who was mentioned in the terrible legends. Tired and scared, that explorers lost ground under their feet. Each subsequent step seemed more and more difficult, as if nature itself had turned against them. They noticed that the creature was whispering something to itself. Slurred words mixed with sharp clicks of teeth. And suddenly, a feeling of indescribable fear and helplessness seized everyone. 
Then, Doctor, Mackenzie noticed that Iloko was carrying something on her shoulder. She looked closer and realized that it was a piece of clothing from the missing geologist. The same one whose body they had found earlier. This amazing discovery by Doctor. Mackenzie pushed her even deeper into the labyrinth of mystical creatures and their mysterious lives. Now that they were face to face with Iloko, their exploration mission became even more difficult and dangerous. What other secrets do the forests of the Congo hide? And what other horrors await them in this dark depths? How will this mystical duel between a man and a monster end? And who is waiting for fate in this hostile world? The answers to these questions remain unknown. The researchers slowly but resolutely continue their journey deep into the dark wilds, preparing for any exciting events that they will encounter in the fight against the epic force of nature and mystical mysteries. As Dr. Mackenzie and her team moved deeper into the forests of the Congo, they faced more and more obstacles. Their strength and resources were pretty depleted. But despite all the difficulties, Dr. Mackenzie was determined to continue the research. One day, during their expedition, they discovered an ancient temple hidden in the depths of the jungle. This temple was decorated with incredible sculptures depicting creatures similar to Iloko, as well as extensive symbols and runic inscriptions. While exploring the temple, Dr. Mackenzie and her team discovered artifacts related to Iloko which promised to provide answers to the age-old mysteries of this isolated region. However, suddenly the team was attacked by a pack of wild animals. Getting out of this they lost contact with their base camps and devices. It seemed that nature itself was against them. They faced the primal fury of the jungle, facing threats at every turn. However, at this point, Dr. Mackenzie decided to return to the camp to reflect on all the information and materials that they had already collected. This determination and wisdom helped them to get out of this unfortunate situation. They returned to the base camp, where for many weeks they analyzed the data and discussed the strategy. Doctor Mackenzie understood that the mystery of Iloko and their origins remained a great mystery, and she felt obliged to reveal the truth about the existence of these mysterious creatures. Although many discouraged her from continuing her research, Dr. Mackenzie was unwilling to leave this mystery unsolved. She decided that she must return to those depths of the woods with a new team and new methods. To solve the mystery of Iloko, she retired from the university and assembled a team of brave researchers who are ready to help her in this unique research mission. So, in a maze of gloomy wilds and mysterious runes, Dr. Mackenzie and her new team continued their search for research, ready for any new dangers and discoveries, in search of answers to the ancient mysteries of the Congo forests and their inhabitants. And what they will discover on this other mysterious journey remains a mystery for now. During a new expedition, Dr. Mackenzie and her team stumbled upon a mysterious phenomenon that turned out to be the key to solving the mystery of the loco. They discovered an ancient temple, which turned out to contain a powerful magical artifact capable of summoning and controlling the forces of nature. Dr. Mackenzie and her team began to investigate the artifact and found out that it was used centuries ago to summon and control the loco. This discovery shattered their understanding of the essence of their mystical beings, gathering all their strength and determination. Dr. Mackenzie and her team decided to use the artifact in an attempt to turn Eliko's forces against them. Using ancient knowledge and the magical power of the artifact, they summoned Eliko to the edge of the forest to confront them. And so, when the evil cannibal gnomes appeared, Dr. Mackenzie and her team felt the power of their presence. There were whirlwinds of wind, rustling leaves and strange glowing figures. But thanks to the artifact and the wise actions of Dr. Mackenzie, they were able to sharpen the forces and subdue Iloko. Thus, 
They found a way to curb the mystical creatures that had been causing terror in the hearts of the locals for so long, Doctor. Mackenzie and her team were able to bring peace and quiet back to this unique corner of nature by solving an old mystery and ending the legend of the evil loco. And it was this unpredictable ending that was marked as an unforgettable achievement of science and research.